All right, everybody, ladies and gents, welcome, welcome, welcome. Live stream number, I don't know what it is, what number it is at the moment, but uh, I'm just going to start by playing a bit of guitar. We've got a few people watching already say g'day and where you're from. Let me know hello from whatever country you're listening to at the moment, listening to from. I'm just going to play a little bit to get us into the, the right zone at the moment. I don't know if anyone out there, you guys have been watching my videos lately. The latest one, it's up, TikTok and Body Rock. I was mucking around with this little chord progression here, which I quite like. But stick around, I'm probably going to show you a little bit of what I'm doing in there. So it's kind of nice. started nice pretty little thing mm. so yeah welcome it's monday here in new zealand and sunday where you are probably for the rest of the world right and so today i thought we we're going to be doing oh also we started a little bit later because this is eight o'clock in the morning in new zealand because daylight savings is finished and then we've finally caught up to the rest of the world when you guys change your clocks so the clocks have changed twice so uh, it might be a real strange time for you. But if this works for you as far as time goes, please let me know in the comments as well. And um, ask me anything. Ask me whatever you want. Ask me, what a, uh, ask me all about whatever it interests you and things that you're struggling with with guitar. And in the meantime, have a think about that. Start typing in the comments. My wife, she's on board at the moment. She's got a little, we've got a new puppy. So it's, she's holding on to the wee puppy while she's doing the keyboard thing and watching what's going on doing one arm press ups, she does every and again. And um, so yeah, she'll be looking at those and having a look through and if there's a comment that she thinks is really cool, she'll pop it up on, on the screen for me. So, um, so I won't be able to read them instantly. But first, just let me know, just say hi in the comments and just say, um, hey, this is John from Poland, or this is Ebony from, I don't know, someplace really cool in Iceland, how's that? And also let me know what time it is where you are too, because I, I quite like seeing that. Helps me know what time it is where you guys are and lets me know if this is a good time for you or not. And it could be really late at night for you. So um, here we go. Let's talk a little bit about what I was doing just now, right? So what I was doing is I'm playing these chords. I'm in the key of E major. E major is one of those lovely chords. I'm just doing the strumming pattern, the ballad strum, the one I love so much. That dum Andy from Suffolk. Andrew, good to meet you, mate. And then I'm um, doing this TikTok pattern with the uh, body rock going on, of course, with the um, ballad strum, which is the down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, down. And I'm playing these shapes on the seventh and ninth frets, right? So it's a bit like we're an E major chord, like that would normally be an E major. Like you, some people would play it that way, they would play it this way. They would play it is my E major bar chord. So it's based on an A chord shape. And so that, that's where we're playing. But that's an awkward shape and you're going to play, you know, if I play just normal. And then normal bar chords. That's all good, but it's like, it's nice to get these open chord shapes. So the open chord shape, I'm doing the same notes. I'm doing zero, but I've got seven nine nine but then i've got two open strings at the bottom so the bottom strings are both zeros and they ring pretty much throughout the whole thing 
Guns. Hi, Mark from, was it Mosa? Mosa, Myland, Italy. I've never heard of that place. I've heard of Italy. I have heard of Italy, mate. That's amazing. Mosa, my, I want to look that up now. That's awesome. Good to see you, Guns. Gary Jacobs from Indianapolis, and it's 4 p.m. That's pretty good time. That's pretty good time in the States, yeah? Scott from California, and it's 1 o'clock. That's good to see. Good to see. All right, I'm going to keep Oh, Why Barabbas? Oh, I've seen you before, mate. I've tried pronouncing that before. From uh, Scott from California, we've got uh, Lugeth from Liverpool, is it Lugeth? Lugeth. John Lugeth. Oh, cool. I guess you call that on uh, Lugeth as you like your uh, nickname from Liverpool, England. Nice. What time is it there, mate? What time is it in England at the moment? It's probably like, geez, probably 10 o'clock at night, maybe there. Mike Olson. Sorry I'm late. Lots. Oh, that's awesome. Colorado, Detroit, Michigan from Nobby. Awesome. Awesome. A lot of people from the States at the moment, loving that. So I'm going to show you these cool shapes. Let's get on with that, but I'm jump, jumping into that in a minute. It's awesome. So we've got E, e chord there, is, which, is a, which is another way of playing an E chord. Nice way of doing that. Let's have a look at the second camera from the list. Yeah, nice one. So what we've got, 079900, right? Now I'm changing from that. All I do is just, let's have the second camera. Uh, just have the, the guitar. Yeah, there we go. Nice. And then the first finger is going to come off. To play an A. It's all I'm doing. I'm leaving everything else there, right? Now that is in by itself is probably something you might not have done before, right? So here's my E. My A simply lift my first finger off. And I've also got a C sharp minor if I want to by putting my third finger here on the ninth fret on the top string and killing the string below as the bass note. So what's happening is my bass note's moving constantly, and the rest of the chord is pretty much staying where it is. So you've got E, A, a C sharp minor, and we've also got a just a typical B chord. If I play my B as a bar chord, but lift the bottom off so the bottom two strings are open, so here's my B bar chord, just playing the bass note only with the bar, I get this, which is seven, nine, nine, eight, zero zero on the bottom so so the whole way i've got this i've got this little chord ringing in here of those two notes and at the beginning of the bar i'm hitting the bass note and i'm just feathering the rest of the chords so you can see what's going on there pretty cool and there's a few other things we can do like a, with the A chord. When I, when I hit an A, I like to do a few, because I'm only doing two notes, two fingers. I've got this, I can change to this from this chord position I was in, initially to like a very similar one, which is eight and nine, still leaving all the strings open. So that's nothing I'm playing. I'm missing the top string. I'm playing zero, nine, eight, zero, zero. And I can slide that up. And I can change shape slightly, but I can do some cool stuff with that as well, which I like to do and sort of add in when I'm playing an A chord to awesomeize it. So here's my E. Here's an A. Here's a B. C sharp minor. And that's enough sometimes to play a cool song with. Now the other cool thing is because we've got these open chords and we've got spare fingers really, well, I'm able to do some little, like little melody things. So there's, there's these two notes here on the bottom string. I've got zero, seven, nine, zero, seven, nine. Those notes there are all available to me. I was doing there with the, um, with the A chord. I'm, I'm just doing, I'm just doing a little hammer on with those two notes. So I'm going from that shape to that shape. So there it is. There's something a little bit interesting going on in, in there. Something a little bit different you might not have done before, but um, quite a cool little option, right? Let's just go there. Two cameras as much as we can. I think Keita, that's probably the smartest way to go, just to um, so I don't have to flick between them. Hopefully that will. Hopefully that'll work. And it, Looks kind of funky with the two cameras, eh? Anyway, cheers, guys. Coffee for me.
Now I've had COVID. I got COVID three weeks ago, and um, it wasn't severe, but it's just hung on and hung on. And so you'll notice my voice is a bit weird, and I do crash on occasion. Not just the internet, but it's just me crashing like up again. Caffeine's not a great idea, but it gets me through this, and uh, it will sort me out. Otherwise, healthy and well, and I'll be awesome. But it's just annoying, isn't it, guys? When you get COVID, it's just slowly, slowly leaves, but not really. So you got to be careful. So, um, and so what? Who's, who else we got out here? Let's have a look. Any questions, by the way? If you've got a good question and st- something you need to let me know about, ask me about. Um, give me. It can be anything. It can be non-guitar related if you like. If there's something you want to know about on uh, to do with where I live to do with, I don't know, what I think about what's going on in the world. Does it, does, is it, I don't know if you really care. I'm not exactly going to be a top pick for that, am I? So I'm not really going to be a top pick. Your political correspondent, yeah, let's ask a guitar player because that's a smart move. And uh, although I do keep incredibly um, abreast of all these issues. But um, yeah, ask me some stuff. I'm going to, some other news, we're going to be moving from the studio because this is, we've sold this house uh, in about three weeks time. We're moving out of here. So it's unfortunately going to be having to move, but I love the fact that we're going to move because it's going to be an awesome new studio. So there might be a little bit of a mess around for a week, but we'll see. Hopefully we'll still be able to live stream. We're going to do our best to make sure we can do this. A bit behind on the videos because of COVID and my brain was not working and it was, you watch the videos back and I'm not. If I did try and do anything, I was just like low energy. And I don't want to put you guys through that. I, I don't want to put you through it. It's just horrible. So, uh, yeah, ask me some cool que- questions, guys. Um, I'll just have a look through who else we got here. We got uh, Nobby's Detroit, Michigan. We got John. It's 21. So it's 9 o'clock where John is. Uh, Alec, hello from Cyprus, from Greece. Love that. Love that. I've got some friends going there. Um, one of my students actually going on a holiday, be a, holiday there soon. Andrew Thompson, it's 9 p.m. So it's a good time for you guys. Looks like it is. So where, where am I moving to? So Big Papa Rio, um, we're, mov- we're moving to a place called Greymouth, which is in New Zealand. It's a very small town on the west coast of the country, quite rugged. The west coast of New Zealand is rainforests. It's uh, an incredible spot. Not a lot of people. It rains a lot. It rains a lot, but it is beautiful. So we're moving there from Nelson. So we're at Nelson at the moment, which is at the top of the South Island of New Zealand and moving to um, Greymouth. So a lot of people think I'm Australian. Even Kiwis think I'm Australian because I think I've learned how to speak a little bit differently for YouTube channel. And it's now become my go-to accent, (laughs) which is slightly more Australian sounding than Kiwi. So uh, yeah, so we're both looking forward to moving there. It's exciting. And um, we'll give, do a tour of the house, and you'll probably see some shots from different parts of the house, which will be excited. I know my, my wife's excited as well. So, uh, yeah, and it's a more simple lifestyle. It's a bit cheaper over there to live, a um, little bit more freedom, I guess you could say. And the people are amazing over there. So I'm hoping it's going to be a good move. So who we got here? Andrew, great. N- not uh, not missed you. Uh, nice. Andrew Marriott. Yeah, you man, you, you're locking in most of these live streams. That's really cool, Andrew. So, yeah, ask me a question about anything. Um, what's some cool stuff we can talk about? There's actually some stuff going on on Patreon. So on, on the oh, that's a cool question there. There's a, um, on Patreon is I'm doing a, a regular updates on there with some tabs for people that are learning and they want something to look at each week. It's kind of bite-sized. You know, when you look at something and you could, I could quickly learn that. It looks pretty sweet. I could probably learn that in you know, five to 10 minutes and learn that tab and start programming it and make it part of my plane. So I'm doing bite-sized pieces like that and sort of mixing it around a little bit of finger style, like a little part of the piece of an intro or a chorus of some cool finger style song, something small, like four bars that you can cycle and it sounds awesome. So I'm going to be doing things like that uh, on tab form and doing quick video outlining some stuff about that, that I want you to be aware of when you're learning it. And so that is just for the patrons patreon members so there's different levels of patreons you can you can uh, join at a a lower level or pay the big the big bucks which is not that much and it helps me out each month having this um that channel being growing because it helps me support this sort of stuff i don't know if you guys know but we actually pay for editors and things like that not for this one obviously but um so that we can we can get the thing going more professionally 
And so it's really cool for people to just want to jump on and actually not have to think every week and go, what am I going to do this week? Well, here's a thing that's got like, here's Patreon. I can go on there and Mark's done some cool stuff. Oh, I haven't done that finger style pattern. Cool. I'm doing that this week. And what else? I'll do that. Cool riff. There's a riff there. Awesome. I'll do that and I'll add those to my playing. You can add it into what you're doing. You can just do that. You can just, it's just nice to have that option. Um, and the cool thing is that like, I would be excited about that as a student. So I'm quite proud of it. Because, uh, yeah, because I'd just be all over that. That would be awesome. Plus, you can have interact interactions with me. I'm going to be doing a, uh, I'm going to be setting up a, a group meetup at some point too where a lot of the patrons are going to be getting together and we're going to hang out just us in a private group. And, um, yeah, be quite fun. So, um, so yeah, do be encouraged to go. That's patreon.com if you want to go over there and forward slash Martin the Guitar Guy. There it is. Look on the screen. Thank you, Nikita. Um, yeah, so I'm super excited about that and um, obviously working on the channel as well, but it's um, you'll get the bonus stuff on there as well. But anyway, let's get into some stuff. Let's get into some questions here. So, hello from Germany. Moan Kumar. I've, I've, you've said your name before too. Um, big Papa. I want Big Papa Rio. Depends how you say that. Do you learn new things on guitar regularly or do you just use what you already know to teach? Um, so personally, I am lazy. In general, I wasn't lazy when I when I began guitar and was starting my career. I was very not lazy, and I have become more lazy. I will admit admit that. So, um, but I am learning more stuff. So I'm I'm starting to get back into that habit again. So you get to a certain level on guitar, you can kind of just maintain it and get away with it, which you'll probably find most guys do. One that doesn't, that's Tommy Emmanuel, because he sets such a high level. He practices all the time, plays all the time, challenges himself all the time. And um, I'm not in that league, but because uh, I play enough and I'm like, oh, I love what I'm doing already. So I've moved from being into the guitar. And then I, once I got to a certain level, I moved into singing and learning songs and playing gigs by myself and in producing. And I love my favorite thing is being in the studio and creating songs. And I play lots of different instruments badly, but enough to record them and make them sound okay. So that's my favorite thing to do. But when it comes to guitar, I'm actually learning. We've got these um, these little Black Mountain uh, thumb picks have been sent to us. We're going to be doing a, some videos and working with this company. I love these things. And so I've been kind of learning how to, relearning how to use a thumb pick, which I've never really liked because most of them suck. Whereas these ones don't because they're actually basically a guitar pick stuck to your finger. And um, so that kind of thing, I love that I'm getting to use something different. It makes me play differently and even picking. So I'm getting like back in. I don't have to pick very hard because of these thumb picks, which are kind of cool. So there's that. And also right with just normal picking or that kind of stuff. This, I want to get more into my guitar soloing and because I've lost a lot of my chops. So I'll be on my electric guitar generally and I'm getting my electric guitar chops back and finding interesting ways of playing scales. So that's another thing I'm thinking about putting on Patreon is just kind of showing my progress and letting people know like, hey, I'm actually practicing. So every day I'll be, I can upload something and maybe have a, have a go through of well, how I would practice because that might be fun for you to see, right? How I would structure a practice session which is something I've been helping a lot of clients with at the moment, getting really excited about how to structure an actual guitar lesson. Because it's something to think about, right? Like people are thinking, am I playing songs enough? Do I play, am I not doing enough songs? Am I doing too many? Should I be doing more technique? And there's all these questions that people ask. So, so I thought I might document some of that stuff. There's a rambling answer to a question, which was really cool. Michael Olson, what was your first full song on guitar? You mean full song with, I, mean, I assume you mean melody and guitar at the same time so what would that be believe it or not it was a long time in but it was probably this one uh, let me do it uh, it's cavatina but theme from the deer hunter which is this one here it's gonna be rough been a long time but 
Ooh. So it wasn't quite the full song, but it was like that was the first melody slash guitar thing that I learned finger style. Um, first thing I learned on guitar overall was I learned my father taught me he knows cowboy chords, right? So he knows, which means he he doesn't he knew D, but he didn't know what it was called. He just knew it, that shape worked. He knew G, but that was his G, and he only strummed the bottom three strings, four strings. And then A7. He knew A7, which was like that. It was which is like from the A down, but he didn't know it was A7. He didn't know any names of these chords. And he would just make up, he'd be like, with his thumb there, he'd be like, singing a song with these three chords. Making some stuff up with, and he would sing. He's got the same voice as me. Honestly, he's literally my voice, even singing wise when he sings. So he's, he doesn't know how. Um, he's actually could be a professional musician, but he's like, oh no, 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 no. Pretty amazing. But anyway, he would show me those three chords, and this is what we did with it. What no pick in those days with, and it was. So I learned how to play that. And that's pretty much got me my first year of playing guitar, was just playing those three chords. And it was happened to be the year that La Bamba came out, right? Wrong chords for it, but it was like La Bamba is like. You know. But everyone was impressed because I did the, the higher, of course. I couldn't sing it. So I was this little short. Uh, what, 11, 12, 12 year old actually, I was 12 years old, learning on a classical guitar, you know, nylon strings, probably out of tune, broken, and in the um, school music room, and and I'd be, and I'd show one other friend how to do that, and we'd just jam on that for like an hour, and just having a great time, so that was what I learned there, but um, any other questions guys? You can keep going personal if you want to, to guys, I'll let you know if it's too personal, like, um, does this really have coffee in it? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, hey, Keita, can you just send down a little bit more vodka? I'm not letting you know what's in there. Andrew, I took your advice, Mark, and started a YouTube channel to post my own songs and had some good reactions. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. Such a good way to be um, accountable too, right? Because you've got to learn new songs all the time. Like, oh, I've got to keep my audience happy. Really good way to do it. Good on you, Andrew. So, Andrew, if is your YouTube channel this name, Andrew Marriott? So the other guys can go and check out your songs. If you're up for that, just make just let us know if that's your channel, and they can go and click on that name and find you. Or is your what what is the name of your channel? Is what I'm trying to say. So, uh, so what else we got? Michael Olson, awesome. Thank you. Love everyone's path to knowledge and their story and the stories. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so um, I started that. That was 1980. Whenever La Bamba came out, I just thought it was the coolest movie um, about the story of Richie Valens, and that was the 80s. And, of course, there's a love story in it and all that stuff as well. So it's kind of, you know, that romantic part of me like that at 12 years old because I had no idea about girls, and that took a lot, lot longer to figure out <laughs> than guitar. So what else we got? There's only a few pieces I actually know all the way through, to be honest, as it gets finger style thing. But hi, regards from Tripoli, Libya. That, that is pretty amazing. I've, that's probably the first person that's ever said hello from Libya there. So, so uh, nice to meet you, my friend. And uh, what time is it in Libya? That'll be, uh, I'm trying to think even where Libya is. I'm so ignorant of certain parts of the world. I'm lucky enough, guys. I was in the army for nine years and we traveled quite a lot because I was part of the army band. So we got to travel to a lot of, destinations that weren't just war zones you know so I'm going to places that are that are quite interesting so um, outside of places that are you know dangerous so we got to play to got to go to some amazing spots so I got to see a lot of the world very lucky but not Libya never been to Libya certain parts of the world I still love to go to Andrew Merritt yes all my own song oh they're all your own songs so that does that mean you've written the songs Andrew very cool so go check out that guy's Andrew Marriott. He's got his own channels. Maybe inspire you to get out there and do your own channel. It's so simple. Just upload a thing to make a, make a channel, upload a video to it. Done. So easy. Obviously, you can get more professional with it. But that's pretty cool. So it's 10 p.m. in Libya, yeah? It's, so it's all pretty good. That sort of time's working out. It's, it's reasonably late, but that's not too bad. It's probably just on the edge. 
Andrew, yes, awesome. So yeah, so that's one. When I'm, uh, I, I tend to be a noodler as well. If you please, I'm just going to ramble. If you don't ask a question, I'm going to be boring and ramble about whatever. So yeah, please, please ask me a question. It can be about anything you want. But um, yes, we've got. When I pick up the guitar, I tend to play just pretty stuff. I tend to want to play pretty stuff. I tend to want to play like there's a that kind of stuff. And I don't do normal chords much anymore. So I don't often do like full Ds and proper As and B minors and Gs. I probably play a G a lot, but I'm usually like, I'm doing like lots of that sort of stuff. Finger, the little amount of fingers, the least amount of fingers I can have on there, the better. Because then I can really, I can really do some interesting stuff. Like I'm not limited if I can get rid of a few fingers. So my A becomes as two fingers or one finger. And I play like an A sus two chord. Um, that kind of thing. So, so I like mixing it up a little bit. I'm just trying to show you the best angle here, probably best about there. So yeah, you get um I don't often just play normal A's and B's or normal famous songs. I excuse me, I tend to noodle and try and come up with stuff because I'm a songwriter also, so I like just experimenting and seeing what happens when I like. And then try and make the chords work together. And then make something a little bit interesting like 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 um do something that I didn't expect in there. But the thing I like the most is generally they're having that recurring open string note that's constantly going through there. So, um, look, so if I'm doing a B minor, got that open string in there. Hope not, that's not freezing too much. It looks a bit pixelated at the moment. Hopefully that's all right. Might just be the camera on the phone. But um, yeah, so I try to get something happening. So in this case, I've got this open string here, right? So I might have this. Um, I might avoid playing that string, that bottom string, and do like this B minor. By the way, this B minor I love. See that there's a B minor, right? Is a typical B minor shape. Let's find the best person, best way to shape that. That looks good. <coughs> Instead of doing that, here's the cover there. There's a B minor I like to do. It's a cheats B minor. It's not officially B minor, but I've got the bass note covered. Here's my B, right? Nothing at the top string. I'm playing. There's an open string on the D. And then my second finger, always the best angle, second finger is playing same fret, the second fret on the third string, G string, and then my third finger is on the second string, which is the B string on the third fret. And then it's open, so I've got this. And I can mute if I want to, this first finger, I can mute that note in the middle. Now this stuff I just discovered from being lazy with my fingers and trying to make a chord work and not wanting to, to drop my thumb and do a proper B bow and a bar chord. And I'm just like, and I'm wanting to keep this note going the whole way, right? This note here, right? This is the note that I'm recurring. So I might be G. I might do a lazy G without the first finger. So I don't even hit that string. And I kill that one up the top. So I'm kind of killing this string here. Here's my B minor. And it's, then there's an A, which is pretty much an A suspended chord. And then I might, I might resolve that if I want to. So it leaves me free, it leaves me free to do riffs. Oops, a bit out of tune that one. And then I've even got this little um, extra finger sometimes I like putting in there. It gives me a kind of drone sound, which I quite like. So all that awesomizing, I call it, Try, finding other ways of playing chords. And each time around, I might change it up. So. Just finding ways of awesomizing those chords. Now, all awesomizing is, guys, if you've never heard of this term, is just trying to, <coughs> excuse me, trying to add other notes to chords or take other notes off or take, change, have moving notes throughout your chords is the best way to put it, right? And by that, I'm meaning I'm instead of just playing an A for the whole bar, I might take a finger off and put it back on. Doesn't have to be too much, you know. 
So what we do normally when we learn awesomeizing, we try to do everything we possibly can, like every riff you could possibly do in one bar, like or something crazy, or like like something crazy. It's too much. It just it doesn't need to do much. You've already got a nice sound going on. Just by moving one thing throughout a chord progression is enough to make it sound like it's constantly moving, constantly flowing, especially when you've got a lot of it, like you've got whole two bars of A. So you might be G to the B minor, like I was doing to the A. Here's my A. Two bars of that though, so I need to make... So I make it move, you know, so I've got something going on. Instead of just being G, B minor, and then A, which is boring for me. So another thing is um, when I'm doing this stuff, by the way, any questions, just fire it up, Nikita. If there's a good one there, it'll stop me from rambling. But if you're enjoying the ramble, this is good too. But I learned this from being in an Irish band, a uh, duo, an Irish duo, where I was the guitar player mostly, and then my friend Dino was playing mandolin. Um, we were a duo called um, Acoustic Everything. We played in Irish bars. We played mostly like 50-50 Irish music and the rest is contemporary, like Violent Femmes, R.E.M., Oasis, all that sort of stuff, Ben Harper. And I didn't sing in those days. I just played guitar. So I was just trying to make the sound good. And then people would go, the bar was pumping just about, well, quite a lot. Every Friday, Saturday night, it was pumping. And I, so I'd have to make it dancey because people would, would just want to dance. They're drinking Guinness and whiskey, and, and it's a great atmosphere. And so I'd have to, I'd have to, like, I'd, I'd just from playing, like, uh, there's some. Um, so there's that groove, which is, you can dance to that, but I'd add in the thumps and the and that kind of stuff. Is it? Made it way more dancey when I was doing that. Of course, I'm TikToking and body rocking. Now what I'm doing to that is adding the bass chord to it and a few riffs, those sort of things. I'm splitting the chord up. So I'm not just doing, I'm not just doing. See, most people wouldn't even do the bass like that, the bass chord, bass chord. They'd just be like. Now I put the, the oomph in there, bass, bass, bass. So I'm separating the chord, and then you add the thudding on the right hand as a, and adding a bit of muting in there, so I'm. Slowing it down so you can hear that. So that's where that style developed. It was out of boredom, because I'd be playing these, with playing three, four, five hours a night just me on guitar and my mate on the mandolin pretty much and trying to keep them dancing all night long so you can imagine it's a lot of playing and playing some pretty easy songs pretty easy nothing nothing complex really in there a few bread songs maybe i think we did but other than that we would i had to make it interesting for myself because otherwise i'm just like drooling from the side of my mouth going <sighs> I never, I never did that, but I was enjoying myself, but it's just trying to make it more interesting for the band, for, for me and for everyone else. That's how the style came about. It wasn't, I didn't learn it from a YouTube because there was no YouTube. This was 1990, 1997, 1998. This is when we were doing that. So long time ago. I see you have a mandolin in the back. Is it really different? This is from Sean. Is it really different to playing guitar? Yeah, it is. It's really different. But a lot of applying, you can apply the same TikTok technique, right? So that TikTok technique can sound really cool. Um, and you can awesomeize even more because most of the chords are only two fingers or, yeah, mostly two or three, or three fingers. So you've got room to play. But the whole scale, the way it's set up, the scale of it is very different. So it's not, the, if you learn a scale on the guitar, it's not really going to help you too much on the mandolin because you've got to, relearn it you often get four notes on a string for a scale on the mandolin but it's so cool and once you you'd start off with on a mandolin with just doing some cool chord shapes which are real just to learn d's and c's and g's um it sounds cool enough just like that on its own we should plug it in sometime but nikita and i play that together sometimes i'll play mandolin sometimes she'll play we need to do more of it because it sounds so awesome the mandolin 
and the guitar together. This, they're made to be with each other. They occupy different frequencies. You know, the guitar's nice in the middle. Mandolin's chiming away at the top, and then you've got the bass underneath. It's, oh, awesome. Yeah, so um, on my own recordings, uh, Dustin Gold is our um, the, what we do. I do a bit of mandolin playing on that, so you'll hear some tinkering on that. That's me on mandolin. MKA Melt. Mika Melt. It's a cool name. I've been following you for years since Jamarama. Oh, wow. So Jamarama, you're going right back to the beginning of the first time I'd ever gone on screen doing lessons because I started it with Jamarama. So some guys that were doing a um, – they were selling online guitar products, and they were one of the first in the world to do it. And so they did really well. They had this big office in town, and this is in Christchurch. And I um, I went and saw them and said, uh, hey, look, I play guitar. I teach guitar. Um, is, is some way I can – or do what you guys are doing and they already had like four or five guitar teachers and um so we teamed up for this thing called um song pond so they had this idea of creating of teaching songs and that's how i started doing online lessons and then they realized i actually was pretty good at teaching to the camera and i explained things really differently because the guys that were teaching me were great but they weren't teachers to start with they were kind of thinking well if i was to teach it this is what i'd do or they would teach the way they learned Whereas I'd been already teaching for, at that stage, probably 15 years. And so I already knew how what problems the students would come across. And so I already had an answer for them before I did, they would even be taught it, if you know what I mean. So I'd be like, oh, if you're playing the D chord now, it's going to feel like this. You're going to notice this and you're going to notice this. And this string's always going to be like hitting the other finger. And they were amazed by that stuff, I think. So um and plus, I got good at talking to the camera, which I'm not doing now, which is this one and that one at the same time. So, um, yeah, that was Song Pond. And I had to have the Britney mic in those days, the Britney mic, and would teach like Hotel California and all the big songs. So, yeah. So, um, and the, 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 that site didn't ever really got, got traction. But because of that, um, we teamed, I teamed up with Jamarama and just became their guitar teacher. And uh, we did extra videos for them. So, jamarama.com, just love those guys. They were awesome. John and Dave, still good friends of mine and still ring them on occasion and hang out. And um, and they and actually, they started the YouTube channel. So Mark, the guitar guy, they started for me because they wanted to promote. It was a way to promote Jamarama. But then it took off so much, it got became bigger than the Jamarama thing. So um, because the channel was more, I think, more YouTube just became this bigger thing than any of, any of us really realized. Hey, Mark, do you play anything by Greg Lake? I don't, mate. I don't think I've heard of Greg Lake. It might be one of those situations where I check out Greg Lake and I'm like, oh, of course, this is who Greg Lake is. But no, sorry, mate. Maybe he plays something of mine. No idea. No idea. <laughs> Sean, a lot of Kurt Cobain sounds come from this lazy chord work. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes you'll hear a string and sometimes you won't. Yeah, so, and not only, you'll even hear like, like the bits in between, right? Like that sort of, that's a, You often hear like strings that aren't supposed to be in there as well when he's playing. So, because you only need three notes to make a chord, sometimes even two when you're doing a power chord, right? You know, it's only two notes. Sounds like more though when you hear it. It's like, ah, oh, that's a chord, but really there's only two notes there. Sean, I'm 50, but have trouble growing a beard. Does that inhibit my ability to awesome, automize? Awesomeize? Yeah. Um, it can affect you in some ways. Once again, I don't know if you see my video on the recent one on TikTok and body rock the socks i've got on are actually made for that particular technique and they help for acoustic resonance in the room so the socks i have on are very expensive socks um and the professionals all use them and my beard as well this is not actually real this is um i put this on every morning it's just a face mask for covid and i just started way before that i was way ahead of the game guys way ahead of the game this is not my normal mouth either usually it's uh so sean i'd recommend getting one of these just go online um wish.com do a lot of them and if you just get a look this 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 is actually all just not real because why would i get one like that does has gray here why would i do that it just doesn't make sense but it does have acoustic treatments in it this is i went for the acoustic treatment it's a bit more expensive but sean if you want to go for that um you're 50 you probably should look at these things because i think it'd be a smart move to have you know an acoustically treated bed um, find the tone that you like though right try different colors ginger has a very harsh tone but very strong very strong and it's a nice fragrance 
Andrew Marriott, I find it very hard to change from strumming to picking uh, out individual notes in a song. Any advice on how to stop it sounding fractured? Yeah, so one of the things that you post, when I come across this one, it's usually um, people aren't using their little finger to anchor. So in their right hand, this has got to anchor. I'll come closer to the other, the other camera. So if you anchor that little pinky, that should give you a little bit more success, right? Here's my little finger here. That camera's a little bit taking its time. But the um, but down here, little finger's anchored. So when I'm strumming, it's kind of off and on. It's bouncing off and on. So if I'm... So every downstroke, it kind of lands. And then if I want to do a riff, it's already in, in position, so I'm hitting the right string. But it does take some time to get used to that. So if um, if that's freezing, by the way, Nikita, at my end it is, but if that's freezing at your end, Nikita, just chop to the other camera. But um, if that's normal for everyone else, hopefully that's okay. But yeah, the little finger anchoring is going to give you the accuracy from going from strumming to being able to pick a string all of a sudden. Because if you're picking a string, otherwise you've sort of got this floating hand. You've got this floating hand, meaning there's no connection to the body of the guitar. And you just like... And now you've got to look at the string. There's no way of re no reference point for the hand. But if I'm able to touch the guitar, it's like little senses all throughout my hand and my arm and my through the pick itself when it's strumming, uh, sending information to my subconscious to let me know whereabouts on the guitar I am. Sounds like a lot, but if you just anchor, get used to picking and then strumming and then anchor the pick and then even make it part of your strumming, I'm pretty sure that will sort you out. And the other thing is just persevere. You're going to hit wrong strings, but don't use your eyes. Don't look. Look away from your right hand. All of, all of you guys, when you're playing guitar, do not look at your right hand, all right? Or whatever strumming arm you've got. Because if you're looking, you're going to stop it from learning and, and having its own independence because you're, it's relying on your eyes to get the right strings. But if you look away, it's going to be a mess for a while, and eventually it's going to very quickly you'll find it becomes more accurate. And then a few days into it, you're like, oh, actually, this sounds awesome, and I'm actually way more accurate. Usually, most guys I teach, it's one week. One week of actually persevering, not looking, and they've pretty much got like 80 90% accuracy even more on their picking hand, okay? So hopefully that's a good question. Thank you for that question. Gary Jacobs, I play left-handed, reading tab and having to basically turn everything upside down, uh, upside seems to slow me down and frustrate me a little. Any tips for the left-handed tab readers? Um, unfortunately, yeah, you just got to re, you just do have to recalibrate everything, right? Uh, there's probably sites out there that will make it left-handed, but I haven't found anything in, you know, too much. Unfortunately, you just have to get used to reading it that way. So reading tabs. The, the thing with tabs, though, once you've got an idea of how to read the tabs and you, you just settle in, all you're ever, when you're reading tabs, you're only reading it to get the information off. So once you've got the information off, don't look at the tab. So get it in your subconscious. So you read a piece of um, you know music and it might be, you know, you read this riff uh, and go, okay, I know what the notes are. Don't look at it and you're like, and trying to get that trying to get that programmed before you take the next bite out of it so don't let it hinder you too much a lot of people we find things right my fingers are too fat you guys say that i'm sure you guys say that to yourself oh my fingers are too fat my fingers are too thin i'm too old i'm too young there's always a two i'm too left-handed you know i should be less left-handed a bit more right-handed doesn't have <laughs> i'm too tall i'm too short i'm too white you know it just goes on and on there's all these things that let us we always think there's something wrong with us, that's, and that's why we're not getting this stuff easily. The fact is, there's nothing easy about learning guitar, and um, it's fun, but the hardest thing, if you want to make guitar really hard, is by doubting yourself. So get rid of that doubt, stop doubting yourself, push it to the background, and just go through the emotions of playing guitar, and enjoy the process. Enjoy enjoy learning a new, like, the, if you're... That riff, that crazy riff that I just made, uh, so that riff there, like if you, that could be quite a struggle, but I actually quite enjoy the way it feels like trying to get that slide. Like you might, oh, it's falling. Oh, it's falling off. What, how do I fix? And then when you get it, you're like, yeah, celebrate. So just celebrate the wins and make it a really small microscopic focusing on that little idea um, thing. And you enjoy the 
process of learning guitar. And it feels like it's a long way from sounding amazing when you do that. But honestly, it's the best way to go because you want to keep your energy up. You want to keep positive. You don't have to love what you're doing over the top, but just be okay. I'm just going to play. I'm just going to get through this. I'm going to do this for another five minutes and then I'm going to do something else. So don't worry about it. Five minutes, set my timer. Or uh, when the ads are finished, I'll stop. You know, it's not about, don't judge whether this sounds good or not. It's not, not the right question to ask yourself. Always be playing, getting through it, and looking for things you can improve. But don't go, do I suck or do I sound awesome? Because that's a hard question to answer. When I'm playing live even, most of the time I'm just I'm just pushing that part of me away because there's another part that's like, oh, that was a typical gig. That, that, so that was a typical riff. Well, that was a bit average. Your tone's a bit crap. Uh, I think that third string's out of tune. Like, there's all these things that, that are trying to annoy me while I'm playing. And no one in the audience can hear those things. They're all enjoying themselves. And so I need to push that aside. And then I, I find I focus on, when I'm playing live, people in the audience. And I just play to them. And I'll, still, I'll find some, you know, there's an old lady in the background tapping a toe. And she's just doing a wee jig. I'm playing a Johnny Cash song or something. And I'm like, right, I'm playing for that, that lady there. And I'm just like going for it. Um, trying to turn it up for her so that she can have a good time. And then I forget about how what's happening on the guitar. And if I play, if I play it back, you guys play yourself back. You probably listen for those mistakes. And you know, There's no mistakes. That sounded pretty cool. So hopefully that helps. Jerry Ward music, acoustic covers, and more. Got to check your channel out, man. That's what I need to do. Hey, Mark, great to catch another live from you. Looking forward to tonight's live. You rock. That's awesome, mate. So you're doing a live too tonight. Is that right? That'd be cool, Jerry. Everyone, go go support everybody on this channel, by the way. If there's anyone else like that's awesome that you're doing, you're doing that, Jerry. And uh, what do we got here? I've been following you all the way since Jamarama. Oh, that's right, from Sri Lanka. CJ, can you give a couple of tips on playing solos? So now playing solo guitar by yourself to an audience and acoustic, and is that solo or playing guitar solos? Just if you want to be clear on that. Because they're both very different things, right? Tips on how to play, play guitar solos or tips on how to play as a solo musician. Let me know. Get back to me. Do you know how to play any of So Real by Jeff Buckley? Man, Jeff Buckley, I get a lot of requests for his stuff. Eh? And um, most people know him because he did an amazing version of Hallelujah. And unfortunately passed away. One of the tragedies of the, um, of the 90s, really, in the early 2000s. <coughs> Excuse me. But no, I don't. I'm sorry. It's um, I, most of the stuff I do know. I got a weird taste in music, so once I learned guitar and got reasonably good at it, I stopped kind of listening to a lot of guitar players because um, I kind of got to the stage where I'd had enough. And uh, now, thanks to students, they'll be like, "Have you heard of this?" And I'm like, "Wow, this is amazing!" So I'm discovering people all the time. But um, but I don't know that song by by Jeff Buckley. Sorry. Any other anyone else out there? Anything else? We'll keep going a few more minutes. My energy level's not too bad. Got to drive to Christchurch today, so keep the energy up. Keep it up. Make sure you smash the like button too, guys. It helps with the algorithms. We've got 25 people watching right now, which is awesome. That's about that's that's good for me, right? It's good for me. And I'm doing this each week. I don't care if one person shows up. I'm still going to be doing this, guys. But it's awesome that you support me. And please, yeah, hit that like button. It actually helps the algorithm. It sends it out there. It sends it to other people, supports the channel, and more people know about it. And then next week, more tune in. And so it makes this whole thing more awesome. And you get cool questions. So guitar solos. Ah, cool. Thank you for uh, answering that. CJ. So CJ, the um, soloing is the most important thing. And I've, I, you might have heard me say this. There's thousands of scales, right? And it's overwhelming. You think, I need to learn every scale to be a good at guitar solos. And that helps, but it's a distraction. What you want to do is get good at one or two scales. You start with one and become really proficient at using one scale in a bunch of different positions and making that scale as interesting as possible. So I always teach the first pentatonic shape, which we all probably know by now. If I did it, here's my list, so it's B minor. It's that scale shape there. The first scale shape that most people will learn when they learn guitar playing. And then there's also um, a way to play it in a major position. I use the same shape. I don't use a new shape. I, so there's my major. I put my little finger on it, and that's where I'd start my scale from. It's the same scale shape. So there's my B note here. 
and there's my you can hear you can hear how it works with that and so then I'd get good at making that interesting and jumping around that because when we first learn scales we learn we do this right oh, let's say I learn a whole scale meaning all the notes in the scale right so I'm doing the full minor scale I used to do this by the way this is me badly played but you can hear and um, probably to you guys was like wow but it was like I could hear a lot of stuff in there it wasn't good uh, that sort of stuff fluffing over notes but that I used to do that and it got me nowhere because when I go to play a solo they go go for it Mark do a solo and I'll be like I'd do that right because I'd been practicing that or I'd be like and I'd be trying to break out and doing something interesting, but it would just sound like running up and down stairs constantly. I'm just... Uh... And that might sound cool to you guys, but honestly, an hour of me soloing, you would be very sick of that constant going up and down the same scale shape. Um, so you're forced into a situation where you've got to be interesting. I'm just tipping out the rest of my percolated coffee. So let's think about that. If you're practicing scales, and let's go back, let's use the full scale, right? You're learning the full scale here, and you can figure out what the full minor scale is. Go and look online, go to Google, type that in and bring that up. I haven't got a thing to show you at the moment. But <clears throat> but if I was to do that, that scale shape, I'd break it down into sections. So I'd be doing like, let's say it's the bottom three strings. So I've got three notes there, three notes there, I go up to here, and then you've got three notes here. So here I've got my bottom string, second string and those three notes and then the those notes and so I'd if my backing track let's say my backing tracks let's say that was I'd have a backing track that's the other thing by the way make sure you're playing to something if you're playing on top of something it forces you to be creative and work with the song and be interesting as well so you're able to work the notes with the chords so you know I'd be like trying different rhythms out and then jumping across notes, instead of going just down linear, I'd be like skipping through notes. So I'm jumping around the place a lot. So I'm making up things within that area. So I'm like, mm. so I'm like, mm, mm, here's, here's the song. And then I'll... Um, So I'll be adding that to it, right? Making it as interesting as possible. Stick with one scale shape, be interesting, three strings, whole backing track. And that way it forces you to be interesting for that whole time. Then move into some other stuff. So um, no live for me, Mark. I'm not there yet, it scares me. <laughs> I'm happy watching yours. Oh, nice one, so you're meeting tonight, enjoying, enjoying tonight's live. It's awesome, Jury Ward music. Have to check that, we check, have to check that out, guys. Some, some smart cookies listening to this live stream right now that probably be pretty amazing to go check out there's a bunch of guys i teach because i teach skype lessons um from my studio here one-on-one -on -one lessons and you guys you guys can do that stuff as well but it's about three of them that have got their own channels um and and they're playing professionally as well it doesn't that might you guys are thinking oh my god they must be amazing and they're really good but they're just like you honestly there's no difference andrew marriott i've I've checked out Jerry Ward music. Oh, nice. Very impressed. There we go. So Andrew's checking out um, Jerry's stuff, Jerry Ward's. And Jerry Ward's probably checking out Andrew's stuff. And it's good. We get some likes going. We get some views going on our channels, guys. We're helping each other out like a brotherhood. It's awesome. Guns, can we see some slap techniques on acoustic guitar? So are you talking about the kind of like that sort of that kind of stuff? But like you does because there's all that sort of tickety tickety stuff. I don't do that very well, but I usually do that. I usually do a slap within the, the groove, so I'm like, a, so I do that sort of stuff. Like, so that kind of stuff, I can give you a bit of that. I'll play a little bit and see if, if you like it. We can go into it a little bit. There's lots going on in that. Let's, let's have a reggae groove, right? I use it for that. 
Everyone knows what song that is out there? So I use it like that and break the song up to, into a percussive thing if I'm by myself. If I don't have a groove and a looper. So I usually end up doing the... That back beat, that, that bit there, I'm lifting the fingers off and taking the pressure off, strumming it and also giving the wood of the guitar a bit of a whack at the same time. And I'm aiming at the bottom three strings to give that back beat slap kind of thing. So it gives you that, um, that bit there, that beat. One, two. That kind of back beat there. So. And I'm actually doing like a... And then doing a short chord inside there as well. So I'm doing a B minor chord. Lots going on in there. So I'm going bass and an up little ghost up stroke. Down up on the bottom strings. A chick note and then a chord again. So I'm going... I'll show you the right hand. And that release... I'm just releasing the fingers, taking the pressure off from his on, here's off. So the strings, bottom strings are ringing, and then if I push down, they'll play a chord. So that's what I'm doing there. And I'm like doing it, often doing it down up in there as well. Traveling in a fright out combi On the hippie trail head full of zombies You get the idea, innit? Do you come from a land down under? We may go Now there's another cool thing, let's talk about that. So I'm doing singing at the same time. My body is rocking. So my latest video, TikTok and Body Rock. Something I've developed later on, later on in life when I'm teaching how do I get the groove going and singing and getting it dancey and make it feel good? I usually have to get my body involved. So my TikTok is already going on, right? We already know about TikTok, right hand TikToking. But I've also got a foot tapping. I've got a little dance. I'm standing at the moment. So I've got this little groove going on. My head's doing the one, two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four. My head count goes forward on the, on the downbeats. <laughs> really helps even when I'm singing at the microphone the microphone's here it's kind of static and I'm like I'm, my body is I've got this little tap going on my heel on my foot and I'm keeping my head going a little bit and my shoulders and it doesn't have to be a lot but the whole thing is helping me stay and locked into the groove and sounding awesome Amanda, Amanda. nice cheers Jerry Always work on those chops, my brother. So it's awesome. It's awesome. So yeah, so that, that TikTok body rock is what's helping with that groove. Now, if I don't do it, you can actually, if I did a hearing comparison without it and with it, there's a feeling that gets sort of thrown in magically. There's a vibe, if you want to call it that, that gets thrown into that song if I, if I do the movement. So you can actually, that's why when people are in the studio, you'll see them getting into the song in the studio. No one can see them. They've got the headphones on. And they're singing the song and they're getting in the mode. Now, if they did it completely stationary so that they'd get a perfect voice, uh, you know, voice, what's the word for it? Perfect take. <laughs> then you'd be one of the perfect, like, part of, away from the microphone. Here's my microphone here. I don't want to be any further than this. I'm going to sing all my lyrics here. But if they're able to move around a bit, they'll actually get a vibe turn up, even though it's not technically more perfect. It's a, probably a little rougher, but it's kind of cool. TikTok and Body Rock was a good video. Cheers, Sean. That's awesome. So yeah, I hope you like the thumbnail as well. My my wife made that. Got my sexiest face on for that one. I look like John C. Riley had a baby with more plates, more dates from YouTube. Anyway, here we go. So yeah, that groove. I can do that groove for anything. If I've got a reggae song. Gets quite a lot of chickity chick going on there. But even if just that... Even the rocks run down, down, up, up, down. You can make that roll. So that back beat, chuck, 
the chat, the two and the four, I'm always kind of throwing that in there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And I'm, I'm releasing my, even my open Gs and I'll kind of find a way to roughly hit those strings and make them muted to get that kind of sound. So you might notice when I do D, I often do this with my little finger. I often bring it on like that. So I'm going like. So my little finger's got this. It's, I didn't practice that. It's kind of happened over the years and it's just developed that. So yeah, that'll happen sometimes too. But it's kind of nice having that stop in there. Now, if you don't have an interesting enough strum, you end up with this. It's sort of a lot of emptiness, right? You need to have something else added in there. So you get a bit more groove going on. But that's the slap in there. Sounds kind of cool, right, with the backbeat. Even a slow song like... Now, a lot of the stuff we talk about, guys, is right hand. It's actually the strumming arm. I don't know if you realize that. We very rarely talk about the left hand. I mean, the scales, there's riffs, there's all sorts of things that are interesting here. And our eyes always go to this part, right? We're always looking, what's Mark doing down here? But the magic is hard to see, but there's actually magic happening in the right hand on this area. So you'll find that's often the case. But anyway, guys. It's about time we signed out. Thank you so much for joining. We've got 17 people still watching right now, which is so cool. So cool for my little channel, which I'm so proud of. So, uh, guys, it, it's the best time is hanging out with you guys and looking at your questions, looking at your comments. Guns, I see there's a comment in there as well. Yeah, with palm muting. Like this, I'll go back through and read some of these later on. And um, I really appreciate your comments, guys. It really helps the channel and it helps me make better videos, to be honest. Otherwise, I'm a bit boring. But um, Alexandra just joined you there. I love your videos, man. Keep it up. Blessings. I'm a Brazilian watching and learning from Portugal. Oh, yeah. nice one. Nice one. Well, my Latino friends, I love that. At least we're in the right hemisphere, eh? Bottom part of the globe. It's pretty cool. But yeah, thank you, guys. Cheers. Cheers, Gary. Enjoyed the show. Thank you, Sean. Thanks. Cheers, brother. All right. Time to see you guys later. I'm signing out. Going to go do some actual work. Cheers, team.